this is a story about uh, marbles and ramps. So this is uh, sort of, this is where I formulated my ideas about uh, energy transfer. It's probably 1979, I guess I was eight or nine. And I had at this point uh, was, was really into um, rolling marbles down ramps from different heights and knocking things over and listening to their sounds and modeling them in my way, trying to understand these relationships between things. And I noticed things like the higher you put the marble on the ramp, the more dominoes you knock over at the end of, of the ramp. And also the higher you start, the louder it is before it knocks over the domino. And I also put my finger on the ramp, the top, and I could feel the vibration of the friction as it increased as the marble went down the ramp. So, and that was related to the sound. So I knew that these things were related. I didn't know the word for friction, but I knew that it was it was related that somehow the faster it went, the louder it got. And the louder it got, that the, that the faster it would slow down, even if it didn't hit anything, because of the sound. Because I, I realized energy was leaving. I didn't know the word for energy either. But like the thing that was making it go faster was leaving faster because it was coming into my ears. <laughs> That's where it was going. So the louder it was, the faster it would slow down as a, as a function of time. And I did all these experiments in my room, hundreds, maybe thousands of experiments, probably thousands, different heights, different size marbles originally. Um, and then I standardized on like one, one size marble um, so that everything would be exactly the same. And I would measure, I would measure, uh, I didn't need the stopwatch at this point, but because um, I, I, was, I was good enough to, to know how long things took um, in my way without numbers. But I would, I, I put um, crayons on the ground and I put them along the length of the track, color coded in the way that the crayons come out of the box. And I would tape them together with like a little piece of scotch tape and, and string them out. And what I had was like a timeline on the ground and I would watch the marble roll and I knew when it would be at each color crayon and um, in time. And I knew that the, the, the position of it was related to time. And because it was, it was each crayon's a different color. I didn't, didn't need to measure with like, you know, like a, like a measuring tape or like a number. I just knew which crayon it was going to hit and when, and since when you buy a pack of crayons, they're always in the same order. I would just always do it in the same order so that I always knew I was always calibrated around this, this measurement of things. And, and this taught me, um, you know, fundamentally, the relationship between potential energy, uh, kinetic energy, position, velocity, acceleration, momentum, and friction in a model, which are all the things you can know by that experiment. And this was, this was a, a, a really um, important observation in my life because later I used this model to um, understand money, potential, potential money in my habitat and doing work to convert it into kinetic money or actual money that goes in the bank. And later this led to visualizing um, the, uh, the money flowing through a sales funnel and then into the income statement and then moving it through the income statement. And the last step on the income statement is profit and then taking some of that money and sticking it in the, uh, the money bank, the energy bank to store it for later. And so I learned more about business from playing with marbles then I learned the mechanics of business, not the people side of business, but the mechanics of business. I learned from marbles and ramps. And to me, I mean, this, this, I guess I say like this, that story really has been the basis of, of my ideas about energy transfer. And that was when, um, when I was 10, after I figured this out, so it was a little later, I've been doing this for a while. I was like, what am I gonna do with this? Like this, this knowledge of this thing. And I didn't know that, I didn't know what any of this was called, but I knew what it meant. And I decided I would do something good with it when I was ready, something good for nature. And 
um, and later I decided to do an eco project. That was a special story for me.